Why is the area of a circle pi r squared. With a regular old rectangle, it's easy enough to see why the area is what it is. We can simply find the height of that rectangle, find the length of that rectangle, that's something we could measure with a ruler, and then we just multiply those two numbers together. Or literally, we could just count up the unit squares inside the figure. With a circle, of course, that's not possible. Or is it? Imagine splitting our circle up into many tiny triangular wedges. We are going to rearrange those wedges in a clever way. That is, we're gonna try and make them look as much like a rectangle as possible. At first, it doesn't seem they're so much rectangular as they are parallelogram-ish. The base of this parallelogram is going to be equal to half of the circumference from that original circle. You can see we do have the tiny curvy bits and we've got half of them up top, half of them down below, and so that's gonna be equal to something like pi times r, half of the circumference of a circle. The slanted edge of this particular parallelogram is gonna be equal to r, which means we would have to do something else to figure out the height of this parallelogram. But then if we had that, we could multiply base times height to figure out what the area of the parallelogram-ish shape is or at least to get really close to that area. But we do have another option. Rather than use that slant height, which again, always matches the radius of the circle, and then figure out what the up and down height is to figure out the area of the parallelogram, let's just keep increasing the number of wedges on this particular shape. The more and more wedges we use for the original circle, the more and more rectangular this particular shape gets until when you take this to the limit, you can see that it's basically a true rectangle with a height of r and a base of pi r. Of course, when we multiply that together, pi r the base times r the height, we get a total area of pi r squared. This is actually one of the fundamental ideas behind calculus. Basically that we can take curvy things and figure out lengths, areas, other features about those curvy things by approximating them with straight things. We just have to let the straight things get smaller and smaller, and the smaller they get, the better our approximation will actually represent reality.